Let me, uh, first of all, these hearings are very significant. We get people like you, and there's no more qualified uh, panel we could have to advise us and to uh, reflect on it. But uh, also, uh, these are public meetings, and I see the other value is to uh, informing the public of things that we assume up here they already know about. And, and I'd like to concentrate on uh, just the uh, uh, North Korea, because I've always had this bias that that's where uh, the, really the serious problem is. Um, we're talking about two things here. We're talking about uh, their development in the technology over a period of time in developing a, web, a, a bomb, a weapon, and then secondly, a delivery system. And uh, just real quickly, let me run over that. Um, in the delivery system, North, uh, North uh, uh, Korea goes all the way back to the 1970s. In the 1970s, they had the Scud B, and everybody remembers that, and then they forgot that for a couple of decades. And along came 1990, the first Nodong missile uh, test fire range was 1,300 kilometers. Uh, then a few years later, in 2006, the test fires of the, the Taipo Dong II, uh, was long range missile that was, uh, had the capability of traveling 15,000 miles, then firing the Taipo Dong II missile, which he said, they said was a satellite launch. December of 2012, North Korea launches a rocket that puts the first satellite into space. Uh, we, we've watched their progress all the way through to 2016. Uh, North Korea launches a, a solid fuel ballistic missile from a submarine. And then lastly, um, Kim Jong-un declares that North Korea is in its final stage in preparations to test an intercontinental ballistic missile. And you see what they've done in that period of time. I have to almost conclude that the guy really means it when he comes out with this statement. But then going back to the, uh, to the bomb, in 2006, we had one, an explosion that was uh, one kiloton. Uh, in 2009, that was up to two kilotons. Uh, 2013, went to uh, a third nuclear test, uh, was an atomic bomb with an estimated explosion of six to seven kilotons. And then finally, September 9th of 2016, as um, the fifth and latest nuclear test registered 5.3 in magnitude with an explosive yield estimated between 10 and 30 kilotons, which is about the same as it was in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and 10 times stronger than what North Korea was able to do 10 years before. So you've gone over that period of time. When we talk to the military, and we will have them in on Thursday, I understand, I know that they'll say that the two big problems that distinguish the threat that comes from North Korea uh, from other threats, is that, first of all, you're talking about a mentally deranged guy who's making the decisions, and secondly, they, this, this uh, country has been more consistent in both developing its weapon and the delivery system, and come to the conclusion that, as I've come to, that I, I believe that there's an argument that could pose the greatest threat to the United States, and I'd like to just kind of get a response, if you uh, would, Dr. Cha, to that. First of all, are, are we accurate in terms of that technological development over that period of time, and does that relate to the threat? Thank you, Senator. I think what you just described is entirely accurate in terms of a systematic plan by the North Koreans over the past decades to develop a capability that seeks to threaten uh, the, the U.S. homeland. I think there is no doubt about it that that is what, uh, what they are after. Um, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, they have done 71 of these tests in, since 2009, which is a step increase from what we've seen in the past. They've done seven tests since the election of our, our current president. Um, they have over 700 SCUD missiles, 200 to 300 Nodong missiles, and the pace of their uh, development and the history of development shows that they want to be able not just to field one missile that could potentially range the United States, but a whole um, a whole slew of them. So this is a very, a very proximate threat. You're absolutely right, Senator. Yeah. Any other comments on that? Is it completely unreasonable that, that as a result of this we could consider uh, North Korea as the greatest threat facing the United States? Dr. 
Dr. Freiberg? I think it's certainly uh, it's the most imminent. I don't know that it's the greatest in terms of its magnitude in the long run, as, as Dr. Yeah. Tellis said. I think China <laughs> presents a greater challenge, but well. certainly it's the, it's the most imminent. Uh, and one thing to add, just to make the picture even worse, um, it's conceivable that the North Korean leadership may believe not only as they acquire these capabilities that they're going to be able to extort more economic goods from the world, and not only that they're going to be able to deter action against them, but that they might believe at some point they really had an option for reuniting the peninsula. They might believe that Japan would be deterred by the threat of attack on, on bases on its soil from allowing the United States to use it as their rear area to support uh, operations on the peninsula. They might believe that the United States would be deterred from coming to the aid yeah. of South Korea. Well, my time's expired, but the military also says that it's the unpredictability that we have there. Everything else is pretty predictable. You know, we all look back it's wistfully at the days, or some do anyway, I do, the Cold War when things were predictable. We knew what they had. They knew what we had. Mutual assured destruction meant something. It doesn't mean anything anymore. But that unpredictability is what the military is going to tell us on Thursday is the major problem that they have with North Korea. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.